All right, what up? It's Marcos Dynasty Football Dads. We are going through a two-round Superflex mock draft that was done between 12, uh, what we'll call Dynasty experts or Dynasty analysts. And, and I want to go through some different options and choices uh, uh, to kind of give you guys an idea of where to put yourself in this draft. If you have a certain pick, what thoughts might be going through your head, uh, especially if you're a contender or, or rebuild. There are some different little ways that you can go here. Uh, but we're going to start off with 101. 101 is B. John Robinson. Um, it's the easy one. We're not going to be going through these super long, but B. John Robinson is the easy 101 in super flex. Um, honestly, just Mark it in right now on your little draft at 101 Bijan Robinson. It should be that way. Um, the only thing that could potentially happen, and I saw this last year, if you are a team that is at that like 106 spot, which I saw a team trade 106 and 108 when Damian Pierce was a bl was on the clock at 106. They traded Damian Pierce and, gosh, 108, which I don't remember what that bet that pick was, for Brees Hall. So there's just, there's options out there. I don't think you're going to be able to do that with Bijan because Bijan is just that generational type talent and everyone's going to be nipping at the, the heels to try to get him. Uh, so 102, Bryce Young. Bryce Young, uh, still my number, QB1, but again, these this QB tier is definitely putting, I mean, it is putting some strain in my brain because honestly, it is so close between three quarterbacks and it just depends on what you really want. Bryce Young has the highest floor, probably the lowest ceiling of the tier one QBs here, but he's going to be drafted probably a top three pick. And so that is going to be huge advantage for Bryce Young here. And Houston's making some moves to try to position their rookie quarterback into some success here. Uh, so right now, Bryce Young, 102. Um, I can see it go a, a new a couple different ways, but I feel like 102 is going to be a quarterback in almost 90% of leagues, unless somebody's really uh, nipping, nipping at Jameer Gibbs here. So I'm going to say 90% of leagues, you're going to have a quarterback go. And I'll probably say drop that down to probably 70, 60, 70% that uh, QB is going to go uh, QB uh, number three. And that is going to be CJ Stroud here. Again, CJ Stroud, probably the number one overall pick. And so if you're looking at draft capital, you always want the, the, the higher the pick, it seems like the more they have job security. Doesn't mean they're going to be the better fantasy producer. We've seen that with Pat Mahomes, Josh Allen, uh, Justin Herbert. Th those quarterbacks were the third quarterback taken in the draft, which we're going to be talking about <clears throat> a quarterback that is going to be drafted behind likely C.J. Stroud and likely Bryce Young. And so there could be the, the the third quarterback drafted, could be the one, or maybe even the fourth quarterback, depending if he's behind Will Levis too, could be the number one fantasy quarterback uh, of this class. So CJ Stroud, good pick here at 103. 104, JSM. This is a weird pick by, I, I think, an analyst. Somebody that really, I mean, you need GS, JSM, Jackson Smith and the Jigma, if you don't know who that, that stands for. You need him to be at the level of at least CD Lamb. At least C.D. Lamb is a baseline, and that is a really high bar to set. Because even if he's Chris Olave, even if he's Garrett Wilson, it's probably a slight disappointment because you're going to have these quarterbacks <clears throat> in Superflex. Sorry, I have a little bit of a cold going on. Um, and I was at the wild game screaming because there was eight goals and lots of fighting, and I love that. Um, anyways, uh, JSN has to be at that elite, elite tier, that top two round Superflex startup to make it worth it to draft a wide receiver here. And so that is why pick number five, 105, Anthony Richardson is the pick I would make. It is much more risky. I mean, you are talking about Anthony Richardson could be an extreme bust. But in the right situation, in the right if, if he goes to the Colts, if he if he ha I mean if he goes to the Colts, he might be the number one quarterback take. He might be 102. Um, I could see Anthony Richardson. Be, there is lots of different pathways for him being a top five quarterback. There's a lot of different pathways for him to be Jalen Hurts, Justin Fields of last year, the end of uh, the middle to end of last year, like that type of production. There is a lot of that. And there are a lot of things that look, make me look and go, whew, man, he's got some work. He's Terrell Pryor. And so uh, there is a lot to be, um, I mean, he's just a, a high risk, high reward if you have multiple firsts, I love taking Anthony Richardson. Take your gamble. Go a little bit safer. Let's say if you have one oh one, let's say if you have 104, 107, and 109. Take the risk at 104. Take Anthony Richardson. 107, take whatever's left. <clears throat> Jordan Addison, Quentin Johnson, uh, Jameer Gibbs, whatever's left. And then 109, again, go a little bit safer. That is the route that I would do. So it is so important to <clears throat> when you have multiple picks. Try to figure out what kind of strategy that looks like because 
there's definitely, I mean, I, I even told this to, to teams a few years back. It's like, you take a little bit riskier if you have more picks because you have more weapons to gamble with or you have more options to gamble with. So I want to go for those home runs. I want to I want to go for that that quarterback that could be top five. I want to go for that running back that, yeah, maybe he's a little bit undersized, but he's super talented. Um, or like the DeAndre Swift when he was a Detroit Lion. Like that is the type of gamble that I wanted to go after. Um, that those, those, again, are the, some decisions that you're going to have to go through. 105, Anthony Richardson. Number six, Jameer Gibbs. I feel like he's just falling because of his size. Uh, he's not crazy undersized by any means. 5'9", 189. Um, he's a little bit under that 205 thresh mark. I think Jameer Gibbs is extremely talented. I, I see Jamal Charles over and over and over in my mind uh, when I watch his tape. It's going to depend where he goes. Um, I think that's going to be part of the issue. I think his draft capital will be second round, early second is my guess, within that first 10 picks. Uh, where a lot of the Cam Akers, the uh, Dobbins, the Jonathan Taylors, like where all those running backs tend to go, Brees Hall last year, Javante Williams, like they all kind of go into that early second, um, unless you're Bijan and yeah, Najee and Travis Etienne, like you're likely to be into that first 10 picks of the second round, but maybe a team sneaks into the way end of the first to try to get that fifth year option, like with, they're doing with Josh Jacobs. Because really, if you get that fifth year option and you're able to franchise, you get six years of a running back without having to pay him a lot. And then you don't, then you can basically just say, bye bye, see sayonara. Cause look at Cook, Mixon, uh, Zeke. Like some of these running backs are getting cut, traded because they just don't want to pay him, which I don't, I don't, I don't blame them. I don't blame NFL teams for that. Anyways, back on to Jameer Gibbs, my one, my, my number two running back. Oh, man, I am losing my voice. <clears throat> Woo. All right, Jameer Gibbs. Now I sound a little bit better. 107, Will Levis. I, this is a fine pick. I just, I don't see a crazy ton of upside with Will Levis here. Um, but you have to take a quarterback that could potentially be, again, a high-end quarterback too. You just got to take him here. I mean, JSN, I would have above Will Levis here. So JSN, you move a couple spots down. Uh, he's probably the 106 in, in the majority of drafts. And then I'm okay with taking Will Levis here, unless you really need a wide receiver, then take a wide receiver here. Um, but Will Levis here, uh, number eight, Quinton Johnston, uh, again, a big wide receiver. I see him a lot of times over Jordan Addison, and I still would have uh, Jordan Addison a little bit above um, Quentin Johnson. I, I even saw Mason from, uh, I'm trying to think, what, why am I, what, Fantasy Flock, he has moved Jordan Addison down due to size, and I get it. You don't see many wide receivers under that 180-pound threshold succeed at the next level, And but I, I really love Jordan Addison's talent. I, I know he's not as talented as the Devontae Smith, uh, but I really do like his separation. I, I mean, I think some of these wide receivers, if you're looking at this class, Zay Flowers has gained a little bit of weight, but you'll get like Josh Downs. And I mean, there's a lot of undersized wide receivers in this class, but I think the NFL is kind of going more into that. You don't see a lot of big bodied wide receivers uh, succeeding. Like, I mean, yeah, you get the Drake Londons, the T Higgins and, and, and previous, you have some of these other wide receivers, but a lot of them are due to separation. I mean, even look at like Deontay Johnson and like Terry McLaurin. Like these are not necessarily big guys. Um, even Justin Jefferson, the wide receiver one in Dynasty is not a big guy. I mean, yeah, he's 6'1-ish, but he's not, I mean, look at his legs. They're not, he's not a big guy. And so I'm okay with having Jordan Addison above of Quentin Johnson. Uh, but Jordan Addison goes nine here. So I, I again, uh, he hasn't had that elite college production, especially his last year at USC. But where does he go? What team does he go on? Because if he goes into an offense where maybe it sucks, like that could be a, a hit for him. But let's just see kind of where he goes. But right now I have Jordan Addison slightly above uh, QJ there. And number 10, Devin A. Shane, uh, which is an interesting one. He's not my running back three. He would have to go into a situation that can get him into open space. He is a short, lighter, just speedster. And so, I mean, he can run through, he runs through more in between the tackles than Jameer Gibbs. But again, you got to find open space for him. So where does he go? Does he go to the Saints? Does he go to Atlanta? Where, where, where in the world does he go? But likely I'm going to be taking the number 11 player ahead of him, which is 111, which is Zach Charbonnet. Bigger bodied. Um, yeah, ran in those four fives, but can pass catch as well. I really like his tape. He's my running back three. Um, I, I've seen a lot of situations where they've had him penciled in at Carolina. Or not Carolina. I don't know. It was, no, it wasn't Carolina. It was Arizona. Arizona would be a really good spot. 
Um, they're, they're, again, I think he fits into that role. Hey, have Dallas draft him. <laughs> have that big body type of running back that I think can also pass catch as well. Um, I, I do like Zach Sarbanes State. Number 12, Michael Mayer here. Is it early-ish? Ah, it's tough. I mean, I would probably say slightly early for Michael Mayer here because the, the the other player that I have him negotiated with in my head is at 207. So really, if I'm at this spot and Michael Mayer is the one that I want, I'm probably just trading back and getting a different tight end, uh, which we'll talk about here in probably about five minutes. Uh, so again, I think that, that I'm okay with passing on Michael Mayer here and just try to trade back if I'm in a need for a tight end. There are a couple running backs, a couple wide receivers. I would still rather have Michael, over Michael Mayer that I'm a little bit more confident in. Him. So Michael Mayer, again, I think that he's that 203 to 206 type player. But I could see him sneak into 112 in certain drafts, especially if it's tight end premium. Um, I could definitely see that some of these tight ends move up and, and people wanting to take gambles on him. All right, we're going to go through the second round fairly quickly here so you guys don't have to keep watching. Tajay Spears, 201. He has been moving up a lot, a lot of boards. He looked great at the Senior Bowl and just looked elusive and... I really want to see what his draft capital is. That's going to be one of the biggest things for Tajay Spears here. Um, yeah, so Tajay Spears, or yeah, so uh, 201, again, I'm just trying to think in my head. I'm like, where would I take Spears? Probably a couple picks later, but I, I have him definitely over 202, which is Evans. Again, some of these running backs, we just need, there's a lot of running backs into that tier of four to. 12 that I'm like, I don't know where, like Pierce kind of did the same thing. He cemented himself as that next running back to be taken. But then there was a lot of like Rashad White's, Tyler Algiers. Like, where do we, uh, where do we put all these middling running backs and how high draft capital do they get? That's going to be a huge factor into where and how high they go. 203, Zay Flowers put on some weight. I, I liked his tape. Again, another wide receiver that is small in stature. We're going to be talking about him with kind of that 205. We're still in kind of a tier here, so I'm okay with taking Zay Flowers or again, trading back a little bit. There's a couple other wide receivers I have him pretty close with. 204, Hendon Hooker. I like Hendon Hooker. I think that he would be drafted higher into that maybe 201, 112 spot if he stayed healthy. I would like to see where an NFL take, team takes a chance on him, but he looked really good last year at college. He just got hurt, and that happens sometimes here. But Hennon Hooker could be the sleeper of the draft if you get him here in that mid-second round. 205, uh, what in the world did I, that, what, did, oh, um, what did I, oh, Josh Downs, that's what I wrote. <laughs> Josh Downs, again, smaller size. We're just going to be talking about Flowers and Downs and Addison, kind of all the same similar uh, slot. Quick, twitchy, and not even, I wouldn't say twitchy, just quick uh, separators on the field. Josh Downs, again, I'm okay with, if you gave me a tier of like flowers and downs, uh, they're, they're right around the same. And so again, with those two and probably the next guy, they're kind of all in the same tier. You're all going to get in the middle of a second. I'm okay with any of them. Um, I'd even take, uh, actually the next two wide receivers are probably in that, in that category as well, which we'll talk about and then I'll discuss more. Thanks big Tank Bigsby. 206, he's the one of the biggest fallers over the last 12 months of his stock, but he could be somebody that sneaks in into that running back four spot right around Devin A. Chain. I find them almost very similar in value, but I almost, I, I go back and forth. I like Tanks Bigsby. I, I think I might want him more actually than Devin A. Chain, just because I don't like, I love speed. I love the elite speed, but uh, Tanks Bigsby is no joke. I like him as well. And I, there, there was a time where he, Tanks Bigsby was the clear three for me in this class, and he just didn't keep improving. And I think that's one of the biggest issues. Uh, Dalton Kincaid, number 207. The reason I think Dalton Kincaid and, and Michael Mayer are very close, and so that's why I'd rather have Dalton Kincaid at 207 versus Michael Mayer at 112. It's, that's easy in my mind. If it's the same, if it's, that's the draft capital, I'm taking Dalton Kincaid 207 easily over the 112 Michael Mayer. Um, and so that's a big drop off. And I feel like those two are going to be drafted a lot closer than people think, or maybe people think. Um, Rasheed Rice, also in that category with, Ho uh, not with Hooker, <laughs> with Bounds and Flowers. And so, uh, again, a senior, just he's not a smaller wide receiver. He's a bigger wide receiver, uh, but then produced well his, his last year of college. I, I like Rasheed Rice. He's a little bit older, and that's going to be what we're going to have an issue with is he's not he's no spring chicken, and so you're going to have to factor that in a little bit as well. Um, Kendra Miller, number 209, TCU, kind of in that running back area with, again, with Devin A. Chain, with Thanks Bigsby. 
with about another five running backs too that we probably haven't uh, with Evans. Like it's just it, he's in that group. Number two ten, Jalen Hyatt, speed, fast, Tennessee. Loved uh, I loved parts of his tape. Um, I do think there might be more big play potential with him. Um, I see him not, as not, not even George Pickens because I would be uh, a shame to George Pickens because George Pickens was a much better prospect. But I see him more into that big play potential type, uh, big field down the field threat. Uh, Roshan Johnson, two eleven. Into that category, I think that he could be a sleeper. We just haven't seen a ton of him in the college area because of Bijan. And so he could be one of these steals. Like when we had, I mean, Miles Sanders was behind uh, Saquon and he was no joke. And yet um, they came out the same, they, they, this time they're coming out the same year versus previously they would come out different years. Uh, like like Saquon and uh, Miles Sanders had the backfield to himself for a year. Roshan, Roshan did not. So he's going to be an interesting prospect to be at. 12, Darnell Washington. Loved his size, his athleticism and stuff. He is a huge raw prospect, but man, if, if you if you saw some of the combine, it definitely put him in a category where he has now stampeded himself into a top twenty, the top thirty prospect at least for for dynasty. Um, so he, I am not surprised he's at the end of the second year. So again, that's what we have. Smarter science with that. Peace out. We'll see you again soon.